Yeah, that's everything short of a Kruger. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 3, Episode 10, A Dream a Little Dream of Me. This is actually an episode I couldn't remember the full concept of because it's essentially a very big homage to Nightmare on Elm Street with everything short of a Kruger. There are so many elements of this episode in terms of its story, its structure, the way the dreams work, the way that the, the dreams are shot, very reminiscent of Nightmare on Elm Street. There's only one thing that's missing and it's a Kruger. And admittedly, the villain of this episode is probably the weakest part, and it's not just because his name is Jeremy, but it kind of sucks that, you know, that my name is in it. The episode actually starts with Bobby being locked in a dream, and the brothers come and find him. They find that he's just kind of conked out. They don't know what's going on with him. On top of that, Sam is feeling guilty about not being able to save Dean, all the while Dean's knowledge from Ruby has started to slowly change his mind as we see as the episode goes on. And then once the episode enters into the dream world, we see a very peculiar means of how the show is shot. We go back and forth between very reminiscent of first season shooting style to very vibrant, very oversaturated, overcolored sort of shooting. The oversaturation reminds me of the ending of the first Nightmare on Elm Street. A lot of very good trickery used in this episode. Later on in the episode, we're in the forest and then Dean all of a sudden turns around and he's in a hallway. Obviously, they're not able to do it to the same extent as the latter half of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies in terms of the special effects and the gore and whatnot, but they try to do their best within a TV show, PG-13 budget. Aside from the villain and the beginning of a little bit of a cheesy sort of line of query that we've heard about a bajillion times in this show, I actually very, very much enjoy this episode. We get to learn a little bit about Bobby's past, find out why he became a hunter. We also get to see Jim Beaver actually get to put some emotion into his character other than just kind of being a grumpy old man and yelling at the boys. And then when they go after Jeremy the first time, they get Bobby out, but then they have to try and go after him. They're trying to stay awake. Admittedly, one aspect of this episode that wasn't really done at all, that was very much done in the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie, is the kids fighting the overwhelming urge to fall asleep just to catch a little bit of shut eye and that one little moment where they just close their eyes and then all of a sudden they're in the dream world they're in freddy's world i kind of thought that that could have been done to at least a small extent in this episode but they never really had the time to do it and while i'm upset that they didn't go that route the idea that dean just pulls over and is like fudge it we're just gonna get this over with that does properly reflect on their characters if they find that they're put into a corner they're gonna put up their fists and they're gonna go and fight then leads into the dream at the end of the episode which was kind of cool we got to see sam go against jeremy and that little bit of turning around the dream on himself, having Jeremy's abusive father come after him. And that's one of the very few moments that Sam's psychic abilities or any of the demon-related stuff that was in Season 2 so heavily is ever mentioned in Season 3. And that's something that Season 3 can definitely be attributed to have lost due to the writer's strike. But then they kind of make up for that for focusing on Dean's very evident issue of dying and going to hell, which is very well addressed in his conversation with himself. While it starts off on the same foot that we've heard about a gajillion times, Evil Dean is just saying to himself, you're worthless, you're nothing, you're just a speck. Okay, I've heard this, blah, blah, blah. And then he mentions, have you ever had an original thought? Car is dad's, the jacket is dad's. All you do is follow his orders. Oh yeah, I forgot about this, this is good stuff. This conversation is so hard hitting to Dean. It's after this, we never really saw the leather jacket again. We kind of saw it in season six. Fans just apparently like flannel a lot more than the cool leather jacket, but also the jacket was a item of the 2000s. I really, really like this. We see Dean give in to his emotions. We see kind of the future that holds for him when his dead self opens up with the black eyes and says, this is it, and this is what you're gonna become. This is one of my favorite flash nightmares that the show ever had. It's also the best sort of use of Dean as a villain. Jensen Ackles has never really done a good evil. He's never done a job as good of Jared if there was to be a comparison because Jared has been possessed and he also was Lucifer. Jared's just a better villain than Jensen. Jensen just kind of broods more and talks deeper, but he doesn't really do anything. He doesn't really change his character that much. And then the episode ends with Bella having stolen the Colt, which leads to 
pretty big issues and actually uh bella's last episode in this season is also one that i very much enjoy we also have dean finally admitting to sam that he is in fact afraid and i can kind of relate to this a little bit if i can be a little bit personal here when i was diagnosed for a second time with testicular cancer i admit I was a lot more scared the second time. There was a lot more options I had to consider. I kind of tried to hide my feelings with humor. I tried to have some some pretty, pretty goddamn dark jokes. I was working on this indie film with friends. At the end, when we were finished, I did make a joke to the director and the producer saying, hey, do you think you guys will have enough uh, time in the credits for an in-memoriam card? And both of them were like, Jesus Christ. But they also did chuckle a little bit. And I opened that up. I was making the jokes. I wanted the humor to try and reflect on my fear. But eventually leading towards the surgery date, I couldn't hold it back anymore. I couldn't let humor kind of foreshadow my fears and I got scared. So when it came to within the final month before the surgery, I did say to the guys, hey, maybe we could hold off on this a little bit. That humor part of me, that trying to hide up my fears and my emotions. So when Dean is saying, I don't want to die, I don't want to go to hell, I can kind of relate on a small part. But in the end, I'm going to give this episode a six out of seven. The only reason why I wouldn't give it a seven is because of Jeremy. Jeremy kind of sucks in this episode. It's a really cool homage to Nightmare on Elm Street with everything but the title character. So that's, you know, at least they didn't go full on copycat. So now I'm going to read you guys' comments. Admittedly, this video is a bit long, so I'm going to try and get through this quick. Dream a little dream of me is basically a Nightmare on Elm Street. A version of Freddy Krueger who happens to be human gives people dream drinks, then kills them in their sleep. Which doesn't sound as scary as Robert Englund, and I just remembered he cameoed in a Supernatural episode. I do feel that Dean not wanting to go to hell was beaten over the head for 10 episodes. Each episode before 10 ended with Dean being like, nah, that's cool, I wanna go to hell, when I feel like most people watching knew he's going to break at some point. Dragging it out over 10 episodes for me was a bit too long. Dean confronting himself and letting it all out was still awesome to see. And dying in your sleep while painless is also scary as hell. Not knowing when you wake up and being stuck in your nightmares, F that. I don't think it got Bean over the head. Yeah, they did kind of rinse and repeat a few things, particularly Dean just thinking that he's not as woo about going to hell, but you could see it slowly breaking over time. And also again, they were dealing with a writer strike, so all things considered, I don't think it's as Bean over the head as you might say. I think it does itself well, considering everything that was going on with writers union and everything during that time i could be wrong but i think a dream a little dream was the first episode of supernatural that used bright and colorful lighting rather than the dark and gritty one but in this context it works because it was in bobby's dream world like i said there's two different kind of styles of lighting in this one there is the dreary inside the house and then there's the oversaturated when they go outside and then it kind of just returns normal a little bit but admittedly the the lighting from season one is definitely gone it's gone. I really wish that they would film one of the last seven episodes like this, but I know it won't happen. Anyways, those are the only comments because I did this episode really quick. I really wanted to review this one. But then the next episode is Justin Bellow, so make sure to give me your comments. Please, please give me your comments about this episode because this is definitely one of the most talked about episodes in the entirety of Supernatural. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, We'll see you guys soon.